He picked me up by the neck, threw me across the room, broke my arm. Well, I remember my dad saying, Kimberly, you're not going to make out of this hospital. I mean, you're, you're, you're going to die. We have Kimberly Lane here who went through some extraordinarily beautiful experiences and some really challenging experiences as well. Thanks so much for Thank joining you, us. Kelly. It's such a gift to be here. I love the Era Sisters. I'm just, it's been a month of change and it's, uh, I feel the transformation already. It's wonderful. I'm, I'm excited to get back. So thank you for this opportunity. You know, we all have experiences that aren't as pleasant as we'd like them to be. Tell me a little bit about what was happening during your childhood. I grew up in a very happy Midwestern family. Mm -hmm. um, this time I was living in Pennsylvania, and I was always such a very happy kid. I was about 10. It was the summer between fourth grade and fifth grade. There was a dear friend of the family that would babysit us, and uh, so I was sexually molested. Um, that went on for about a year and a half, and then in an effort to control the situation and control what was going happening to my body, I went full into anorexia. And I was I was tall then; I was five nine, and I was probably about 135 pounds. And so, Gosh. by sixth grade, I'd really gone down to 95 pounds. I remember I would ask my mom just to pack me like half a sandwich for lunch, and. I'd only eat like an apple. I was just really cutting down my intake. And I mean, I, I knew I was skinny. I mean, I knew I was a skeleton. I mean, it was, um, my hair was falling out and they had, they, you get this like lanugo. It's just this, this hair on your body to keep you warm because you're so thin. And, you know, I, my skin would barely cover my teeth. It was just, it was disgusting. But, um, you know, you can't help it. You're just like, and you don't want to tell your secret. You can't tell anybody. It's a, you feel like you can't trust anybody. You're all on your own in this old, your own world. And for me, just that whole counting calories and exercise and keeping my world safe was like so critical to me. I mean, I remember in sixth grade, um, <clears throat> I passed out at school and they admitted me to the hospital and I was pretty much, I was down to 86 pounds at this point. Oh my God. And, and you were five nine. Yeah. So I remember my dad saying, Kimberly, you're not going to make out of this hospital. I mean, you're, you're going to die. And he, and he goes, I love you so much. You're going to die. Did they know? They didn't. Nobody knew. I was still protecting that other person. Nobody knew. And that's why the, the uh, anorexia you know, perpetuate, perpetuated is, and I still think women today who suffer from eating disorders, I do believe there's some sexual abuse behind it. So I got married right out of college to a um, man I met in college, uh, introduced through a friend. Um, we got married uh, in November a year later. When I was dating him, he was always kind of jealous and, and possessive, but never violent. I find it interesting that once you're in their fold and you're married, then the abuse started. Um, and it was, you know, he spit on me, you know, kicked me outside the car, leave me somewhere. He, I mean, Picked me up by the neck, threw me across the room, broke my arm. And, you know, you start to walk in eggshells because you don't know anything would trigger it. And, and it's really, you can, they really flip in their eyes. You can see there's no logic. You can't, it's, there's, you can't, you're just, you're, there's nothing, you, you, you can't do anything. They're just gonna, they're just gonna do it. So, um, but, you know, what was amazing to me is, I just lied and said I fell down the stairs carrying up the groceries in the apartment as far as my broken arm, and I've never had a broken arm in my life. And just that nobody ever questioned. And so I held it nuts, so then that was the second secret, right? So I was still protecting the first abuser, now I was protecting my husband at the time. Sexual abuse is obviously incredibly difficult, and were you able to confront your abuser? I was. Um, it was in 1999, I remember this, and I just remember when I called them up and they pick up the phone and they say, I've been waiting for your call. And I was like, I was like what? I'm doing your work for you? You should have called me. I mean, like, I'm doing your work for you, damn it. So then basically from there, I brought that person out to Kansas City for a counseling session. And then I subsequently told my mom, told my dad, told my brothers and brought each one of them out individually to Kansas City and had a therapy session. And that was the most cathartic, come full circle release. I mean, if you can do that and then truly forgive the other person, maybe not forget, but forgive and have that conversation, it is the most powerful healing thing you could do.
If you could give um, women three bits of advice from your life, um, just three nuggets, what, what are they? Three nuggets. I would say number one, you know, just like the Era Sister is doing here, I think it breaks your story. Mm -hmm. I think so many of us run for who we are and where we came from. Mm -hmm. And I think embrace it and use it as your own power mm -hmm. because that only make you more extraordinary. Follow your intuition. Mm -hmm. I we all have that little voice inside us and we always squish that down. And I think the more you allow that voice to speak and really listen to that voice, the stronger it will get and the more comfortable it will get. I think you can never, you can never go wrong listening to that. Mm -hmm. uh, Follow your intuition. Your intuition. So important. And then the third one is face your fears. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's not easy. We all want to stay in, you know, snuggled up in our jammies with a cup of tea or coffee and and a snuggle blanket and don't want to leave the house. You know, it's hard. It's the things I've done have not been easy. It's taken a lot of strength and pain and crying and pushing and alone, but it's worth the other side. And when you, when you, when that thing, in, I, my rule for me is if I have a fear, I've got to do it. My rule for me, I love that. My rule for me is if I have a fear, I got to run towards it. I got to face it. I got to do it. And so that, and that has opened up the doors in my life. I think you'll live more fully if you faced your fears. These women's stories are so impactful. Eris Sisters creates opportunities for women. Mm -hmm.